Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is rarely talked about. It's something that's very important and uh, I wish I had known at the beginning of my crochet journey or at least at the beginning of my pattern creation journey. So this is gauge or gorge, whatever you want to call it. And it's something that is so key and useful in pattern writing as well as creating designs for different sizes. So today I'll be determining gauge for a specific design that I am planning to release a tutorial of. And I thought this was a very good opportunity to bring up this topic because it's something that disturbs so many people. And uh, yes, I think let's get into the video and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, for those who don't know what gauge is, it's an instrument that measures and gives visual display of amount, level, or contents of something. Now, for um, when it comes to crochet, um, the gauge helps us determine um, the number of stitches or the number of rows that we need for different sizes using a very small swatch. A swatch is something like a small sample of something that helps you get a bigger version of that thing. So uh, we're going to jump straight into the video and learn how to determine gauge for different designs. So for this one, I used a bin stitch and I'm going to be showing you how to determine gauge for my uh, Rhapsody cardigan. So this is the design and you can see the stitch there. And I'm going to help you out because um, something that happened over the weekend, I sent out some orders to my team and one of the girls had to do two sweaters and they came out really small because she couldn't determine the gauge of the, of the pattern. Of course, I provided the, the pattern to her but I think she didn't think that the gauge mentioned in the, in the pattern was even useful at all. I think she just skipped that part and just went straight like head on for the pattern. And we ended up having a baby sized cardigan with the arms stopping here. And this is something that I thought I could address. Uh, you can do it for all different stitches, but for today we shall be using the bin stitch. So let's get started. Okay guys, so here we are with our very small sample. Of course, in the tutorial, I'll be teaching the stitch itself, but this is the bin stitch for those who know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, for those who don't know, you will get to learn this in the tutorial. This is for another day, this is not for today. So I have a small sample here. The original design was made in green, and you can see this beautiful olive green color. By the way, this sweater is available to purchase if anyone wants it in another color. I accept orders via email. So I'll be leaving all my details in the description box below. So this was the original cardigan and I'll be leaving some photos of my model um, CC wearing it. And uh, the gauge for this design was, oh my God, I forgot the gauge. I have to check my laptop and I check the written pattern so that I can get all the details. So just bear with me for just a bit. Um, the gauge for this pattern was four BS times four rows is equal to two inches. So what I meant by that was four bin stitches by four rows is equal to two inches. So I'm going to teach you how to do that because when it comes to the blue cardigan, I used a four millimeter crochet hook, which is smaller than the five millimeter. That means I had to fit this gauge that I used for this cardigan into the smaller sizing of the stitches that I used for the blue cardigan. So this is how one of the sleeves looks like. This is what I'm using for the tutorial. So when we are working the tutorial, we shall be using uh, baby blue because this is an order that's supposed to be shipped out. So um, stick around for another tip that is a lifesaver when it comes to gauge or gauge. That is a shortcut to everything. I'll be mentioning it towards the end of the video. 
let me just put that on the screen so that you guys don't forget. The gauge was four bean stitches times four rows is equal to two inches. So when I go to my green cardigan, that gauge applies. Four bean stitches, you can see in between the two inches, let me zoom in a bit. I usually don't block my work, so I don't usually consider blocked work. So I just put like this and I count into the space of the two inches. I have one, two, three, and four bean stitches. Then when I go to the number of rows, I put the zero mark on at the top of one of the rows. And then I start counting one, two, three, and four. We have the fourth row here at the two mark. You can see this? This, I've stretched it a bit. So uh, when it comes to the blue, the blue piece, as you can see here, this is the small swatch that I have worked for the bin stitch. And you measure the gauge for the green cardigan. The green cardigan told us that four bin stitches, as you can see, this applies to the length because between here and here, we have a total of one, two, three, and four bin stitches. So when I count the number of rows, starting with the two mark at the very top, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, and six rows, guys. Six rows are the ones that are giving me two inches. So you can see the difference between the green cardigan, which I used a five millimeter crochet hook, and you can see it's more of a lacy design. You can see that. Now, when it comes to this, it's not so lacy like the, the green one. So if you use, if you happen to use a smaller hook, please put the gauge perspective into consideration because now I have to calculate a few things if I am to use a four millimeter crochet hook. So let me say the green cardigan had a total of, um, let me count them. Let's just be practical in this video. Let me zoom out a bit. Let's be practical. And on my sleeve, I have a total of, let me see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. I have a total of 40 rows for the sleeve and I'm going to note that number down. Forty rows for the sleeve. Now, how many rows are required in case um, I use this four millimeter crochet hook instead of a five? You have to put that into consideration. The five millimeter gives you 40 rows. Now, how many rows are supposed to be worked when it comes to, to the four millimeter crochet hook. So we've already determined that for the five millimeter, we are getting two inches at four rows. Two inches of the five millimeter equals four rows. Then two inches of the four millimeter gives you six rows. So um, we are going to determine how we can figure out how many rows that we can do if you're using 
any different kind of hook. You can choose to go up a size or you can go down a size. So I'm going to be explaining what to do in case you do that. Now we've already determined that every four rows of the five millimeter, if you're using a four millimeter, you add two rows to get the six rows of the four millimeter. And remember, we did a total of 40 rows. That means how many parts of four are in 40, which is four divided by, by four, 40 divided by four, which is 10. So this 10 figure times the two, the two rows that are increased at every part of four. So there are 10 parts of four in 40, and you're going to multiply that number by two to get the number of rows, the number of extra rows that you're supposed to do in case you use a four millimeter crochet hook. I don't know if I'm explaining it right or as detailed enough as I need to be. So um, let me get another fresh piece of paper. Maybe we can try to explain from there. As I said before, we have a total of 40 rows, 40 rows for the green piece, which is worked with a five millimeter crochet hook. Then the gauge, this is the five millimeter crochet hook. This is the four millimeter crochet hook. Basing on the gauge, we have four bin stitches of four rows, giving us two inches. So here, we need to determine this number. It's the one that we are trying to come up with, that number there. So for the four millimeter, we got four bin stitches of six rows is equal to two inches in order to fit in the sizing of this one, the original design. So let's see how many rows are needed in case we use the four millimeter crochet hook. How many rows do we need to work in order to get the same sizing as the green cardigan. So we're going to get the four rows, 40 divided by this, because this is what we are looking for. We are looking for the number of rows. We are not looking for the number of bin stitches. So we're going to get the 40 divided by four, which is 10. That means there are 10 parts of four in the 40 rows. So once you determine this number, and here we already noticed that every four stitches or every four rows, we increase by two because here we have six and here we have four. So every four, we add two in order to get six. That's the only way we are going to get the same measurement as the original design. So you're going to multiply this number by two in order to get 20 rows. So that means for the four millimeter crochet hook, if everything remains the same as we measured it, then we are going to do a total of 40 rows plus 20 in order to get a total of 60 rows to get the same measurements as the one of the four millimeter crochet hook, of the five millimeter crochet hook, sorry. So where you have 40 rows for the five millimeters crochet hook, you will have uh, 60 rows for the four millimeter crochet hook. So once you get this in your head, you're going to apply the same knowledge as the back panel, the same knowledge as the front panels, same knowledge as the sleeves, 
in order to get the same measurement as the designer intended to tell you to make. So let's do another scenario. In case the gauge was four bean stitches of five rows is equal to two inches. In case it was like this. Four bean stitches of five rows is equal to two inches. So you're going to get your 40 rows. The 40 rows are mentioned in the pattern. Someone may ask, uh, where do you get the, the digit of 40? They are mentioned in the pattern. You'll get one part of the design, maybe the sleeve, and get 40 rows. So those 40 rows, Divide by 5, which is here, you will get a total of 8. Then times, times the 2. Remember the increment here, times 2, which is 16. And now you're going to come back to 40 plus 16, which is going to give you a total of 56 rows. So this time, in case you consider this gauge, you will have to do a total of 56 rows in order to fit into this gauge. So I hope I'm explaining it well. So that is the whole mix or the whole explanation when it comes to gauge or the gauge. You have to do a small swatch in order to determine what happens if I use a four millimeter crochet hook? What happens if I use an eight millimeter crochet hook? That's, that's the whole, like, um, let me say it now, the knowledge that you need to have. Once you determine these things, you're now going to go maybe to the main body and the person did a total of 80 rows. But for you, you already have your formula. Let me say the person is doing 80 rows for the back panel. Now for you, you're using a four millimeter crochet hook. So the 80 divided by, by four will give you 20, 20 parts of four. So times two, which will give you 40. And then you're going to go to the 80, the 80 rows plus the 40. And instead of 80, for you, you're going to do a total of 120. Reason being, I don't know if you know why the numbers are increasing if you're using a four millimeter crochet hook. In, um, in the, if I'm to explain it well, if you're using a four millimeter crochet hook, you're having tighter tension, tighter stitches, so the stitches may become smaller and the shrinkage is really tight. And here, the stitches are a bit more compact as compared to the bigger hook. That's the ideal setting for hooks. If you go up a size, you're going to get looser tension. If you go down a size, you get smaller tension. The other thing that you have to put in mind is, if you feel like, if you have a four millimeter crochet hook and it's not giving you this, Sometimes even your five millimeter crochet hook may not give you the same gauge as the designer intended for you to make. This is because we all stitch differently. You may be a tight crocheter and your stitches may be a little bit tight as compared to the designer's tension. So let me say you're using the same hook as the designer, but when you do your swatch, you're not getting the same exact gauge for your design. You have to go up a hook. In case you're a tight crocheter, it doesn't matter whether you switch a hook in order to fit into the sizing of the designer. So you do the same exact swatch until you get those measurements right. And that will determine what hook size to use for your design. I don't know if you get my point. I'm trying to explain it at least as I can, as best as I can. So if you need, if let me say you, you crochet loosely 
and so your stitches are a bit on the looser end and I tell you use a five millimeter crochet hook but this is my gauge for my design and when you do your swatch you notice that for you um, to get two inches you just need two stitches across you know if you crochet loosely and you try to get this gauge and you have only two stitches within the two inch mark instead of four stitches then you're going to switch that hook go down you can even go down to a three if need be if you need to change those hooks please change them so you go down maybe to a three because for you your stitches are really loose you can go to a three instead of a five you can go up to maybe a seven because you crochet very tightly and the only way you can get the gauge for this design is by going up a hook size so that's the other if you don't want to go through these measurements here that's the only alternative so choose what's best for you you can go through the math if you like the math but I think the best solution all in all is to go either up a hook size to get the gauge or down. So the moment you go up a hook size and uh, you get the measurements right, then you don't need to worry about anything. The only change is the hook. Now you're going to use that hook all through the pattern. Now, this hook doesn't really matter when it comes to pattern making or create, recreating someone's design. The hook doesn't really matter. The, the whole point is the gauge that can help you determine what hook to use if you don't want to do the math. But if you want to do the math, stick to the hook and then go through this process. And then we shall see um, what to do when it comes to the tutorial. I hope I've explained everything right. I know this, this video has been um, out of something different from what we usually do, but I hope you gained so much knowledge from um, the video. And I can't wait to see you when we are making the Rhapsody cardigan. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.